And we're joined by Jared Walsh, uh, an all-star a couple of years ago with the Angels. Uh, Jared had surgery at the end of the 2022 season to fix thoracic outlet syndrome. And Jared, how you feeling, man? Good to see you. Yeah, feeling great. Uh, happy to be back. Excited for spring training, and uh, thanks for having me on. You know, I want to ask you, uh, we'll get to your your state uh, and your physical state here in a moment, but I want to ask you about just camp from a big picture standpoint here. First spring training with Phil Nevin, you know, running camp as the manager, uh, took over midway last year. How does camp feel different for the team, if at all? Yeah, I mean, Phil's running the show, um, big time players manager and got a lot of new faces in here. Renfro, Urshela, Anderson, Drury. So, you know, we're excited about the additions we've made. We feel really deep and uh, I think we're just uh, getting the work in as a team. Hey, Jared, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, I want to ask you uh, on the same thing with spring training outside of an all star game that you've been in before. Is this the most talented roster you've ever been around? Yeah, no question. Uh, this lineup's incredibly deep, um, you know, especially guys like Renhifo, Wardo that really came on last year. I think both those guys are extremely underrated. Then it seems like Renfro hits 30 every year. You got Otani and Trout's the best player that most of us have ever seen. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to pitch against this lineup. So when you're in a hitting group and Otani's in a group, I don't know if you've been in his group yet, but I remember the first time oh, I saw yeah. him in spring training hitting balls off the rocks opposite field in your ballpark there. I couldn't believe it. So from your vantage point watching him take BP being a left handed hitter. He's hitting balls where people have never gone before you sat there and just marveled at his power. Yeah, I mean every day he hit a ball at Tempe Diablo during BP. He like inside out at it over the berm over the tree and left center where if you're <laughs> a righty and you hit that ball it's crushed. So yeah, he's uh, he's playing by different rules than the most of us. I try not to watch his BP too much. It hurts my feelings a little bit. <laughs> ah, hey, I want to get back to you Jared because uh, after the surgery that you had last August I know that your kind of timeline in your brain was to be ready to roll and hit the ground running when you came to camp. How did you how did you get there? What kind of work did you do to get the neck, the shoulder back into pre-surgery form? Yeah, it was about five days a week rehab. I got uh, outstanding rehab this off season and uh, just making sure the posture was good. I think that was kind of what happened over time. My posture got really bad and tightened some things up. So uh, just making sure my body was in a good position and uh, it seems like it is now. I'm a lot more confident than I was going into camp last year. So. Uh, I think it's going to pay off down the stretch for me. You know, we, we hear about this injury so often. And, you know, there's a lot of young players watching this show or, or even high school and, and college players. How, what were the signs for you when you felt this starting to come on for you that they might look for? Yeah, it just kind of felt like I was never recovering. I would throw and my arm was always kind of aching, get a tingling sensation in my hand and then up in my neck. I'd try to do, you know, massages and put a tennis ball in there and move it around but it never seemed like it loosened up so um, I think it was probably a posture thing but that had happened over the course of a few years and by the time I was getting to rehab it it didn't seem like it was fixing it so I would just say uh, stay on top of the stuff in the weight room stay flexible keep moving well good advice, advice. hey I want to ask you about uh, the rules changes Jared and how it affects hitters because we're getting different uh, different points of view here. There are a lot of pitchers, famously Max Scherzer, who feels like it's to pitcher's advantage now to have this timer. Um, a lot of hitters feel like they're the ones that are in controls of counts a little bit more. Uh, what kind of conversations have you guys had, and, and how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that plays out. Um, I think if you're a reliever or a starter, you better be well conditioned because Sandoval was pitching the other day in the game that I was in and it felt like he was throwing a pitch every five seconds, even after a PFP and stuff like that. So um, as a hitter, I'm hoping there's more mistakes over the plate, but we'll see. Uh, I've only played in one game so far. Uh, I do think most of the guys like this two and a half hour game. Um, but like I said, I haven't been burned by it yet, so I might be singing a different tune here soon. <laughs> you know, you know what's interesting too, being a left-handed hitter. I, I, we haven't asked a lot of left-handed hitters. What's it like to look out there at, at the plate and not see a shift, not see three people on the right side of the field? I, I, I'm curious your take on that. 
Yeah, I don't know. My BP all spring has been rollover, so I'm really looking forward <laughs> to uh, maybe getting a few extra knocks in the forehole, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think it's going to be good, though. Um, you know, I know certain guys were really victimized by the shift. So, you know, if that adds a little more offense, a little more batting average, I think that's going to be a good thing. What, what about defensively? Uh, you know, a lot of times the first baseman was playing way off the bag and and you, and you were able then to move over to the base and the other guys were shifted over. What about you as a first baseman? How does that change you on the defensive side? Yeah, I think uh, against righties, I'm not going to play as far off the base. Um, and I felt like I was sprinting about 50 times a night to get to first base. So if a little less running for me, I'm not going to be complaining. We have a, a few guys that can play second base with a lot of range. So I think it's going to be good. So with, with regards to the, the new rules and how you guys are doing your work, I know you have some returning voices in the hitting world with the Angels. There's a new hitting coach in camp as well. Do you guys, do you guys actually – practice and work with a clock I mean is there is there that kind of emphasis or is it the same old kind of cage work as before uh, in the cage not necessarily but during live BPs we've been making sure there's a clock to where the hitters and the pitchers can both see uh, the time but you know there's been guys like I've watched judge over the last few years and he barely steps out so I've kind of just copied what he's done and it hasn't been too uncomfortable now, granted, in the ninth inning, you know, you're playing at Yankee Stadium or something like that. You have a big moment. You might, might want to slow it down. That could be tough. But uh, up until this point, I haven't had any problems with it. His favorite background, speaking of Yankee Stadium, it's a great background, that big black background in the back. Favorite background for you, favorite park to hit in? Ooh, uh, I really like the Rangers' new ballpark. It's like a big... Mm green wall back there the batter's eye is huge so I'd say that's probably my favorite so far are you in there today what's uh, what's the day looking like for you this afternoon yep in there today um, first base so gonna get our work in and then head over to the field pretty short day today outside of the game what is the what is the best possible result after the game for you is it is it um some kind of a rehab cool down is it dinner someplace here you're, you're not a golf guy are you jared you play golf down there no i think golf's going to be a post playing career thing um i would like to get into it but i'm not yet so yeah i'd say uh you know how it goes just grab dinner with the guys usually after we don't have anything planned yet but might come up with something hey let me ask you this uh and this would kind of be the last baseball question in a sense you know, playing in the Cactus League, I used to love the fact that the games were so close. You could be 25 minutes and go play the Cubs and come back to your own ballpark right there or wherever. You guys ever come back after the game or you yourself and say, I need to work on something, hop back in the cage and take some swings? Yeah, I do a lot, and I'm trying to do that less. Um, I think uh, sometimes we can overdo it in the cage a little bit by taking too many swings, and sometimes that's kind of how you build bad habits. So I try not to do that too much, but it's really tempting, especially when you have a staff that's willing to work. So um, I think a lot of guys do that, but oftentimes I think less is probably more. Hey, Jared, we appreciate Stuff, the visit, man. man. Glad you're healthy. Glad you're feeling great. Uh, looking forward to a great season for you, and we'll visit with you again down the road. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it.